Is Mr. Mosley here or not? You can bring him in. Good morning, Mr. Mosley. Take the witness stand, please. Emmanuel Mosley, having been duly sworn, was examined and testified as follows. State your name. Emmanuel Mosley, E-M-A-N-U-E-L-M-O-S-L-E-Y. Thank you. How old are you, sir? 34. Do you have a nickname? 44. I'm sorry. 44. Do you have a nickname? Manny Dogs. Are you currently in jail? Yes. For what? Homicide. One homicide or more than one? Two. Can you speak up? Two. There you go. Okay. And do you know specifically what charges you're in jail under? Murder. And have you pled guilty to those two homicides? Yes. What did you do to be guilty of them? I committed them, the acts. What actually did you do? Murder. Did you know the people that you killed? No. Did you know anything about them? A few things. Did you have a problem with them? No. What caused you to kill them? Somebody hired me to. Who was that? Supreme McGriff. Did you kill those people alone or by yourself? No, with a few individuals. Who are some of the people that you killed those individuals with? Barry Broughton, a guy named Smiley, eBay, a guy named Les. His nickname is Les. Do you see any of the people that you committed those murders with in the courtroom? Yes. Can you point that person out, say who it is and something they are wearing? eBay. And can you point out, point him out? Right. What's he wearing? Blue. I think it's blue. The defendant for the record. The record will so reflect he has identified Mr. Granton. What's a mandatory minimum sentence? Do you know what that is? Mandatory minimum sentence? Yes. Yes. What's that? Life. That's the mandatory minimum sentence of the crimes you pled guilty to? Yes. At one point, were you facing the death penalty? Yes. You are not facing that anymore? No. Do you have an agreement with the government? Excuse me? Do you have an agreement with the government? Yes. What kind of agreement? To testify here today for the crimes that I have done, 5K1 agreement. What else does your agreement require you to do other than testify? To be truthful. And you mentioned that it was a 5K1 agreement. What do you understand that to be, a 5K1? Excuse me, say that again? Sure. You said that your agreement was a 5K1 agreement. What do you understand that to mean? This is an agreement for me to testify today. Gives me a chance to, you know, gives me a chance to get a lesser sentence. Now you have not been sentenced yet? No. So you have been in jail for some period of time now, right? Since 2006. Waiting for sentence, right? Yes. Next question. What has the government agreed to do if you fulfill your end of the bargain under the agreement? Under the agreement, have the judge be able to give me a lesser sentence than life? Do you know, sitting here today, what your sentence is going to be? No. Has anybody promised you what your sentence will be? No. Who determines your sentence? The judge. With respect to your agreement, does it matter what the outcome of this trial is, whether or not you get a chance to get a sentence less than life? No. It does matter? No. What happens if you lie here today? Life sentence. Where did you grow up? 
Harlem. Who was in your household? My mother, my brother, and two sisters. Did you have a stepfather? Yes. What did he do for a living? Sell drugs. At some point, did you start doing that as well? Yes. How old were you when you started? Around 13. Caused you to get involved? Just a product of my environment. When you first started, what level drug dealer were you? Small time. Did you stay in school? Mostly back and forth. Did you actually graduate from high school? No. When did you stop going? Around 10th grade. And did you eventually get your GED? Yes. At that time when you started selling drugs, were you selling for yourself or for other people? For myself. What year were you born? 1971. So in 1987, when you were about 13, do you recall being arrested? Yes. What were you arrested for? Guns. Do you remember what the circumstances were? I was in the back of a cab with two other guys. Were they your guns? No. Did you know the guns were there? Yes. And did you plead guilty to gun possession? Yes. Did you eventually decide to sell drugs somewhere besides in New York City? Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. What caused you to decide to sell there? A guy told me about going out of town to sell drugs. So did you actually go there? Yes. About how old were you? I say around 18. Did you go by yourself or with anyone else? I went with one other guy. What was the purpose of that trip? To sell drugs. And can you describe to the jury what happened on that trip? On that trip, I went actually with guys. One guy got on the bus before us, though. We actually lost him. We had to get on the second bus after that to go to the same Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Where were you going to get the drugs to sell? I mean, we thought we were going to catch up with him, but we never did. The man who went ahead of you was supposed to have the drugs? He had the drugs. Did you go to Harrisburg? Yes. What happened when you got there? We met some people and ended up staying the night a few nights. Did you find the man with the drugs? No. So what did you do? Came back home and got some more drugs. Where did you go with those? Back to Harrisburg. What drugs were these? Cocaine. Powdered cocaine? Yes. And was there an advantage to selling powdered cocaine in Harrisburg instead of New York City? Yes, the price was higher. So when you went to Harrisburg the second time, what did you do? We went to the same place, to the same place that we stayed before with a couple of girls that we had met and we end up bagging the coke up and going out to the corners and selling them. Street level sales, is that correct? Yes. Once you finished with those drugs, did you get more? Yes. And did you continue selling in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania? Yes. Do you recall how your business there developed, if it did? I mean, it developed pretty well. Describe that a little more for the jury, if you would. We ended up getting a couple of other guys to go out of town with us. Back then, that's what you could do. You get a couple of guys and just go out of town and just sell drugs. Were you the one, the entire time that you were there, were you the one actually making the end-to-end -end drug sales? Yes, at first until it started growing a little more, that's when we brought other guys up. Do you remember how many people you brought there? Around four. 
How long total did you spend in Harrisburg? Maybe three or four years. And do you recall how much money you were making while you were doing that? Just to give the jury an idea of what kind of volume business you were doing? A hundred grams of coke would probably make about twenty, thirty thousand dollars after you cut it. And how long would it take you on average to go through a hundred grams of coke in Harrisburg? Maybe two weeks. And you were 17, 18, 19 years old at this time? Yes. What were you arrested with? 150 grams of coke. What were you doing with that? I was going to take it to Harrisburg. How did you get caught? I got caught actually buying it from on Amsterdam and 143rd Street, I think. And did you continue selling drugs in Harrisburg after that? Yes. Do you remember what happened to that case? I got, I never got probation. I never went back. I never went back to court. You ended up with a bench warrant? Yes. Did you continue selling drugs in Pennsylvania? Yes. Other than the people you were actually in business with, did you meet people who were from New York City and Harrisburg? Yes. Were they also involved in selling drugs? Yes. Did you meet someone named Tripp? Yes. And where was Tripp from? He was from Harlem, around 140th, 141st Street. Did you learn at some point what his, what was Tripp's real name? Was that a nickname? It was a nickname. They called him Triple O. Do you remember what Tripp's real name is? Barry Broughton. What was he doing in Pennsylvania? Selling drugs, same as me, but with a different crew. Do you remember something happening in Pennsylvania with Tripp? Yes. What happened? He started, he eventually started hanging out with me and me and him became real close. And one day he was on his way to a hotel. At least that's what he told me. He was going to a hotel with a girl. So I asked him, you know, we had a little problem with a guy from Pennsylvania, one of the local guys who was getting tired of us being out there. When you say that, do you mean the local guy was upset with people from New York selling drugs in Harrisburg? Just being inside of their town, period. So please, go ahead. So he was, I want to say about two or three block radius. We was in a house that we used to stay at. He told me he was going to a hotel, so I told him, be careful. Don't go down there starting trouble. He said, nah. I gave him a couple of hours to take the girl named Lethe to the hotel. Can you state that name again for the court reporter? Okay, a girl Lethe named Lethe. L-E-T-H-Y? Yes. Go ahead. As he left, maybe five minutes, between five and ten minutes, I just started hearing gunshots. So five or six minutes after that, he came running back to the same building that we was in, and I asked him what happened. He being Trip? Yes, Trip came running back, and I asked him what happened, and he told me that the guy pulled the gun out on him, and he leaned to the side and he emptied his gun. Emptied his gun meaning what? That he shot the guy up. Did you find out what had happened to the person that he shot? Yes, he died. And at that point, what did you do? I had a guy that used to be driving around with us all the time. I told him to get Trip and take him out of the town, get him from the same area. Instead of taking him out of town, he just took him across town to a hotel. You wanted Trip taken out of town for what reason? So he could get away. And you said that they went to... Trip and this driver went to a hotel? Yes, the driver's name was Jawani. What happened at the hotel? I was watching TV and I saw the hotel on TV. The cops had it surrounded. And? Trip was inside. 
Was Broughton arrested? Yes, he was arrested. Do you know how long or do you know what happened to his case? I think he ended up getting 10 years, 5 to 10 years. For murder? For homicide. In 1992, did you stop selling drugs in Pennsylvania? Yes, I got arrested. How old were you then? 20 years old. What happened that caused you to stop selling drugs? Had you left Pennsylvania before you got arrested? Yes, I had left Pennsylvania maybe six to seven months before getting arrested. What made you leave Pennsylvania? The house that I was staying in got raided. Whose house were you staying in? My daughter's mother's. Was there anything illegal in the house? Drugs. And who lived at that house? Shantaine Burton and her mother. Do you know how much drugs were in the house? No, I don't recall. Where did you go when the house got raided? I was already in New York. And you just didn't go back to Pennsylvania? Yes, I didn't go back. Eventually, you said you were arrested, correct? I was arrested in Harlem. Who arrested you? What law enforcement agency? Feds. And what did they arrest you for? For conspiracy to sell drugs in Pennsylvania. Also in 1992, did you ever get arrested for stolen property that you remember? I think two firearms, but I don't think anything ever came of that. And when you were arrested by... As you said, the feds, where did they take you? They took me to Harrisburg. First, I went to MCC. I got arrested in New York City, so I went to MCC Manhattan, and I was extradited to Pennsylvania. MCC is a federal holding facility? Holding facility. You were taken to Pennsylvania. Were you charged there? Yes. Do you remember what you were charged with? 848. What's that? A drug charge. Is that called continuing criminal enterprise? And do you know the minimum sentence that you are facing under? 20 years. 20 years. What did you do? I ended up getting, I think, 80 some months. I ended up cooperating. So you cooperated in that case? Yes. What did you have to do to cooperate? Tell them everything that I did. Did you have to testify? No. Did you plead guilty to the continuing criminal enterprise? Yes. Do you remember what the quantity of drugs was that you were ultimately held responsible for selling out there? I think it was five kilos or more. Five kilos or more? Five kilos of coke or more. Do you remember if you were held responsible for 13 kilograms? No, I don't remember. How about money-wise? Do you recall how much money they held you responsible for? No. Did you also have some guns when you were arrested or when you were committing that offense? No, when I got arrested, I didn't have any guns. Did you have some guns when you were committing the drug dealing? Yes. When were you released from federal prison? October 15, 1998. You were how old at that point? 27. And where did you go when you got out? Back to Harlem. Were you on what they call supervised release? Yes. What's that? Probation of sorts. It's part of your federal sentence, is that right? Yes. And you have to report to a probation officer? Yes. You also have to have certain conditions, is that right? Yes. What kinds of things did they do to keep track of you? You have to take a urine test. You have to come to your probation officer once. It starts off at once a month 
and then once every two weeks. Did you also have to look for or have a job? Absolutely. Where did you work when you came out of federal prison? New York Sports Club. What did you do? I was a personal trainer. How long did that last? Maybe a year or two. What caused you to stop doing that? Selling drugs. Did you get back into drug dealing before you stopped being a personal trainer? Yeah, at the very end. There was some overlap between the two things, is that right? Yes. What did you do at that point to sell drugs? I sold drugs maybe just hand to hand. What kind of drugs? Coke. Did you follow the conditions of your supervised release? No. How did you break those rules? By selling drugs. But you told your probation officer otherwise, correct? Yes, I lied. You told him you were working, is that right? Yes. Did you also tell your officer that you were adapting to life without committing crimes? Yes. But you weren't, is that right? That's right. When did you actually get arrested for the contract killings that you're in jail for right now? January 20th, 2006. So between when you started selling drugs after you left federal prison and 2006, is it safe to say that you were pretty much selling drugs for most of that time? Yes. How long did you work at New York Sports Club before you started selling? Maybe a year and a half. And over the time that you were released between 1998 and 2006, would it be safe to say that you sold around between 15 and 20 kilograms of cocaine? Yes. Did you know someone named Tuan? Yes. Did anything happen with Tuan in 1998? Yes. What happened with Tuan? I had a couple of guys going out of town and Tuan was sneaking us out of their house. I think they had a hotel. He was sneaking us out of the hotel room trying to steal the guns they had. When you say you had some guys going out of town, what do you mean by that? I had a guy named Les that used to be with me. He was going out of town. I used to give him some drugs and he used to go out of town selling. You said that Tuan was sneaking into a house? It was a hotel room that he snuck into and stole one of the guns. The guy Les, and do you remember the other person's name? No, I don't remember his name. What happened after Tuan stole that gun? I was coming from work from New York Sports Club one day, and I seen Les, and he told me about it. So I went, I knew Tuan was at the gambling spot. I went to the gambling spot to see him, me, Les, and another individual. When I seen Tuan, I pulled out a gun. I had a gun on me and I told him to come here and he came to me and I told him, I explained to him that he needed to stop stealing things from them, stop going inside the hotel room. He told me he was not doing it. He got on his knees and I put the gun in his face and told him he needed to cut that out. Did he stop? Yes. From your perspective, what did pulling the gun on Tuan do to your reputation in the community? I mean, it just bolstered it, made it seem like I was tougher than Tuan. I probably was. Did you know someone named Ralph? Yes. Did something happen with Ralph around 2000? Around 2001, Ralphie was a guy from my neighborhood, a younger guy. That's in Harlem, is that correct? Yes, him and Les used to hang out a lot. They used to go on Broadway and rob people in Harlem. And I used, I was telling them that they needed to stop doing it or one day they are going to be hanging out on 149th Street in Harlem and somebody would ride by and notice that they was the guys who was robbing them and probably get out and do something to them. So they started hanging out with me a little bit more. One day I was coming out and there was a guy on 149th Street that had been killed the night before when I came out early in the morning. 
I thought it was Ralph. It turns out Ralph ended up doing the killing. Ralph had killed someone. You said you were coming out. Where were you coming out from where you lived? Yes, I was coming out from my house. Ralph killed someone out in front of your apartment? No, I lived in Jersey. I used to come out every morning, early in the morning, and come around 149th Street from my house. You would come from Jersey to 149th Street and hang out? Yes, because that's where I was born at. I was born and raised over there. You saw somebody on the ground who was dead, is that right? I thought it was Ralph. I thought what I was telling him about previously actually happened. What happened after that? But actually, it was Ralph and the guy that was lying on the floor had an argument and Ralph ended up killing him. What did you do about that? I found out where Ralph was at, me and Les, and we went and got Ralph and we took him down south. Before we took him down south, we had the gun that he used and we tossed it in the river. So you helped Ralph get away with the crime? Yes. Do you know someone named Charlie Bow? Yes. How did you know him? I grew up with him. Did something happen with Charlie Bow? Yes, he robbed my mother's apartment. What did he rob at your mother's apartment? He actually didn't get anything. He went in her apartment, attempted to rob it, but there was nothing there. And what happened as a result of that? Me and Les and Ralph actually schemed on trying to kill Charlie Bow. Did you actually... Were you successful? No, we never got the chance. Do you know where Charlie Bow is today? He's dead. Do you know how he died? Somebody else killed him. At some point, did Barry Broughton return home from his murder sentence? Yes. Was that after or before you came home from federal prison in 1998? It was after I came home. Can you describe, if you remember it, your first encounter with Tripp? Yes, I met him on 144th Street and 8th Avenue. What did Tripp say to you then? He asked me for a gun as soon as I saw him. Did you give him one? Yes. Did you know what he wanted it for? No, I figured just for protection. Do you know someone named Wayne Davis? Yes. How do you know Wayne Davis? I met him at Fort Dix, New Jersey, in jail. Did you have any involvement with him after that, after you got out of jail? Yes. Did Wayne Davis have a nickname, by the way? Wayne Dick. How about someone you mentioned, someone named Les? Yes. How did you meet Les? He's from my neighborhood in Harlem. Do you know someone named Larry? Yeah. What happened with Larry? Wayne Davis explained to me that an individual that he knew had a conversation with him about Larry. Larry had just came home from jail doing something like 20 years, but his M.O., like the things that he used to do before he went to jail, was kidnap people and stick them up and force them to give him money. So he was having a conversation with the guy that Wayne Dick knew, and he was telling him that Larry was scheming on doing that to him. So Larry was scheming on Wayne? Yes. What did you do? Did you do anything as a result of that? Yes, I went looking for Larry, trying to kill him. Were you successful? No. Did you go with anybody else? Les. Did you actually see Les? Yes, I seen Les, but we actually ended up running into Larry. We actually ended up running into Larry. We attempted to kill him, but he got away. How did he get away? Because when Les got outside of the car, he had a green do-rag on and he pulled it over his face and Larry noticed it and he took off. We chased him but couldn't catch him.
Larry noticed someone covering their face and figured there was a crime about to be committed? Absolutely, because when we were sitting in the car, actually it was the same guy that helped that told Wayne about the incident. He was with Larry. He was setting him up for us. So when they was walking up the block, I told Les to get out of the car because I gave him, excuse me, I gave him a gun the night before and told him to go up on the roof and shoot it off so that he knew that it worked, but he never did that. It was a 45, a brand new gun. So what he did was when he got out of the car, he actually took off behind Larry. He was right behind him, but the gun didn't go off. He got back in the car with me. We got in pursuit, but we lost him. Did you know someone named Jay? Yes. Objection. Do you know someone named Jay? The answer is yes. I think we need a sidebar. Objection overruled. You can ask the question. Was Jay a drug dealer? Yes. Did he supply you with drugs? Yes. What level of drugs did he supply you with? Kilos of cocaine. You would then sell those kilograms of cocaine, is that right? Yes. Do you remember when that was approximately in 1998 and 2006? I want to say around 2003. I'm going to show you what has been marked for identification as Government's Exhibit 32. Do you recognize that person? Yes. Who is that? Supreme McGriff. And let me go through a couple of these. Do you want 32 in evidence now? Yes, Your Honor. Government's Exhibit 28. Who is that? Tripp, Barry Broughton. I'll move Exhibit 28. In evidence. Who is that? Smiley. That's Government's Exhibit 27. I'll move at this point 27, 28, and 32. They are in evidence now. Going back to Government's Exhibit 32, you said that was Supreme McGriff? Yes. Did you meet him at some point? Yes. How did you meet him? I met him through Wayne Davis. Can you explain? Do you remember the day that you met Supreme McGriff? I don't remember the exact date, but I remember the day. What do you remember about the day you met him? I remember Wayne introduced me to him. They was having a little get-together. I think they were shooting a movie or something. He introduced me to him. It was a simple introduction. Did you know Supreme's name before you met him? I knew the name. I knew of the Supreme team before. What did you know about the Supreme Team? Drug dealers, killers, same thing. Did you know anything about Supreme's role in the Supreme Team? Yes, he was the boss. And do you know where the Supreme Team was located primarily? In Queens. Once you were introduced to Supreme, did anything else happen that actual day? No. Did you see Supreme again? When is the next time you see him and where? In a club called Mars 2112? How much after this movie shoot did you see him? Maybe a month or two. Did you speak with him there? Yes. Did you speak with him alone or were there other people around? There were other people around, but he pulled me to the side. So it was a conversation just between the two of you? Yes. Can you explain what happened during that conversation? He pulled me to the side and asked me, could he talk to me for a while? I told him, yeah, what's going on? When I met him, after he left, I talked to Wayne about him a little more, and that was a good friend of his. So he was just telling me that, you know, the guy was real cool with him. He had a lot of love for him. So when I met him at Mars 2112, but he told me other things about him. What else did Wayne tell you about Supreme McGriff? That he was getting into a whole lot of different things. 
if I meet up with him again to make sure that I don't get into anything with him? What did you and Supreme McGriff talk about during that conversation at Mars 2112? He asked me if I would be able to put any kind of work for him. What did the term putting in work for him mean to you? I don't know if he wanted me selling drugs or help protect him or something. After he further explained to me, he was having some problems with some guys from Queens. Did he explain to you anything about the nature of those problems during that meeting? He told me they was trying to kill him. Did he explain to you anything about the source of that feud that he had with these people? No. And did you come to an understanding of what it is that Supreme McGriff wanted you to do? Yes. What was that? He wanted me to kill somebody. And did you have an understanding for yourself of why or of what about you would make you a candidate in Supreme's mind to do this? Conversation with Wayne. Did you consider yourself to have a reputation on the street at that point? Yes. What kind of reputation? That I would put work in. Put work in meaning what? That I would be the kind of guy that you want to hire to try to kill somebody. Did you discuss during that meeting whether McGriff wanted you to do the killing alone or with other people? Yes, he discussed that. He didn't tell me right at that time that he wanted other people. He told me that the guys that I would be looking for would be guys that would be shooters. All right. Did you agree to do it at that point? Yes. And did you discuss money at that point? No. How did you leave things with McGriff? He gave me a phone number. I gave him a number. We exchanged numbers. He told me he would be in touch with me. Was there anything about that circumstance that made you believe that McGriff was serious about this? Just his name alone are made me believe it. And in your experience of committing crimes, would it have been unusual for somebody to ask something like this in the first or second meeting that somebody he met? Not at all. Did you talk to McGriff again? Yes. Do you remember when that was compared to when you saw him at the club? Maybe a few weeks later. Do you remember where you saw him? He gave me a call. He told me to meet him in Queens. I had no idea, like I didn't know anything about Queens, but he gave me directions. Okay, did you go? Yes. And where was it that you went in Queens? I don't remember. It was somewhere around the projects, like a project setting. And did you have a discussion with Supreme at that point? Yes. Was anyone else participating in the discussion other than the two of you? No.